Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Today I'm going to be covering the Brawler. Shout out to channel viewer Baphomet who requested this. If there's a class you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments. I'm very open to suggestions. So, the Brawler. Basically, the Brawler punches. Um, I think any of these three starting weapons are viable, but you also get a bonus fist. And because I think it's most in the spirit of the class, we're going to be using the Fist for the Brawler's weapon of choice. How the Brawler works is you get plus 50% attack speed with unarmed weapons, you start with a Fist, and you get plus 15% dodge. You lose minus 50 range, which is actually only minus 25 range because the effect of range on melee weapons is halved. So since we also get minus 50 ranged damage, we're always going to be using melee weapons. So the minus 50 range is effectively minus 25 range. Basically, you need to position yourself carefully to be able to hit with your low ranged weapons, but take advantage of the very powerful attack speed buff that you get. Fist, I think, is also quietly one of the best weapons in the game anyways, so Fist with plus 50% attack speed is really solid. Something else to consider, I think you can do any of these three weapons. Hand would be kind of fun, just use the harvesting and try to mitigate the low damage of the hand just by having bonus attack speed and buying a lot of damage. And Claw, of course, scales with attack speed, so you already get quite a bit of bonus from the extra attack speed that you have already. Having the precise tag is also kind of nice, but just in the spirit of brawling, we're going with the fist. We can run around punching. Bonus attack speed on a melee character also has like some other interesting effects. Because of how attack speed works with melee weapons, it actually causes your weapon to have a faster swing speed as well. So reduced range and the faster swing speed causes you to gain more attack speed than you would uh, think you were getting just from the plus 50%. It actually works out to be more like 70% just when you take into account the swing speed of the weapons. Here I'm going to go with harvesting. I'm going to buy a fist. We'll lock the bag and we'll roll for more fists. Fist also is pretty nice because it's very, very cheap, so we can afford getting it. We also are going to, even though it reduces our melee damage, buy this fertilizer because we can get that rolling right away. And I'll roll again for another fist. Let's go to wave two. We already have four weapons. Starting with a free weapon is really nice because when you have two of the same weapon, the game is more likely to show you that weapon. So it makes rolling for specific weapons even easier. Um, the Brawler, I think, is one of the more powerful characters in the game, so if you are looking to get a, a Danger 5 win with relative ease, but don't want to just kind of cheese it with, like, Knight or something like I have showed in the past, uh, Brawler, I think, is a really good way to do that. I will take the melee damage and crit chance on the Claw Tree, we'll lock that, we'll buy this Fist, I'll roll again. I mean, if I can get to a level 2 fist, even better. Didn't quite manage it, but we do get to lock one in, so perfect. Because I've reduced my damage with the fertilizer, it's taking two punches to clear those enemies, but that's not a huge deal. We will be regaining some of that damage in a moment. And we have the bonus attack speed, so it can take multiple strikes and still be okay. Always on these waves, try to clear those big pods of enemies as well. Here I am going to just take some max HP. We want to get that up because our range is pretty bad. I could actually here just take some range and regain quite a bit of range. I'm not going to bother doing that though. I think I'm just going to increase my harvesting. We can get that to 40 pretty early this way and then it will start gaining 2 per wave. That's really nice to do. Let's upgrade this. Level 2 Fist also has some additional bonuses because it attacks faster. And we can buy some other items. We're skipping the Ugly Tooth because we just want to kill stuff, not slow it down. And here I'm going to buy the Lumberjack Shirt and lock these two. Gentle Alien, as always, one of the best items in the game. 
We're probably going to be using mostly consumable heal for our healing, but we'll mix in lifesteal and HP regeneration depending on which one shows up. We attack very frequently, so lifesteal is good for that, but lifesteal typically is better for ranged characters, so I'm happy to use regeneration also. My general rule of thumb is on melee characters, you're better off with consumable healing as your main source of healing, and on ranged characters, you're best off with lifesteal, and HP regeneration only on characters that don't really attack. <laughs> Here we are going to just grab some speed, actually, because I've reduced my speed. I want to mitigate that, and I will take uh, flat damage here, because I've been reducing that as well. I'm going to take these two items and roll again. We don't really care about the gentle alien increasing enemies at all, or rather, it's good for us as it's good for everyone, but this character only fights enemies really close to it anyways, so it's particularly not a problem for this character. Increase my max HP, and do I want to lock the compass? I think I won't lock it. I would buy it probably in the shop, but I'm not going to spend a shop slot locking it. Our speed is already positive, and again, as a rule of thumb, I think as long as your speed is above zero, you'll do okay. Some characters want a little more. Some characters can get away with a little less, but above zero usually makes it fine for dodging elite attacks and so on. Just staying in all, all these groups of enemies to make sure that we are punching as much as we can. Even without any luck, we're generating a decent amount of consumables, and because we attack so quickly, we're not getting hit currently. These next couple waves are going to be a little more dangerous because we start having enemies we can't just one-shot, but having some more melee damage will definitely help with that. Let's take this fist, and I will reduce my armor for additional dodge. We are already, because of the... Brawler's 15% dodge and the unarmed 15% dodge were getting fairly close to dodge cap already, so adding in that coin gets us even closer. Let's take this fist, and I will also take this hedgehog. Go on to the next wave. One of the lessons of Brawler, of course, is that just that Fist is a really good weapon, and that attack speed is the most important stat for any attacking character. So between those two things, Brawler gets a lot of advantages and few disadvantages. You of course don't have to build unarmed with Brawler, you can just build any melee weapon. It's pretty hard to build ranged weapons, but I guess if you were looking for a challenge run, you could probably find a way to make it work. Um, here, I'm not going to bother increasing my HP regeneration at this point. I'm just going to be going for... Um, just going to be going for consumable healing, so I'm just going to roll for something a little better. We'll grab attack speed and, yep, 6% dodge. We're almost getting very close to dodge capped. I'm going to buy this garden because we want to generate consumables if we're planning to mostly heal through consumables anyways. Roll a little more. Level 2 claw is a little tempting to pick up, but I'm not going to at this point. We're just going to keep keep buying fists. And I will also lock in this metal plate. That's really nice for us because getting our armor back into the positives will help us not just get one shot if we happen to get take a couple hits in a row. This is another character with a ton of damage bonuses, so you always want to let the eggs hatch on this level. It's worth more money that way. And as long as you can kill them quickly, every character wants to let them hatch if they can kill them without wasting too many shots. Make sure to clear all the trees. Oh, well, we're fighting two at once. Can we manage it? Yes, we can. Very easily, actually. <laughs> um, you do need kind of precise movement for this character, of course, because of the reduced range. Here I'm actually going to grab this harvesting, because I want to get it up to 40 as soon as we can. And while I wouldn't mind crit chance, I think getting our harvesting 
rolling really well is is the most important thing. I'm gonna combine, and I'll take a fist. And because we have the garden, which will allow us to heal off the start of the wave, I'm gonna take the weird ghost. This is definitely a little dangerous, but I'm gonna beeline for that garden. Uh, minus range damage for the healing off the cute monkey, I think is definitely worth it. And we don't have quite enough money to buy both that and head injury this round. So I'm gonna take the cute monkey because we're gonna start at lower health and I'll lock the head injury. All right, where's our garden spawning? Here we go. You start with a, a fruit from that and then yeah, I played that one a little bit dangerous, actually, and ended up standing uh, where that guy was going to hit me if we hadn't killed him before his attack landed. Would definitely like to see some increased consumable healing, because right now we are not healing for a lot, so I may have to change out my healing plans for a different method. Had to get some dodges there. Oh, we got a loot alien. Fist is very bad at killing the loot aliens because the knockback prevents you from running, from keeping them where you want them. I'm going to tank some damage and rely on my dodging just so I can make sure to clear that big horde before the wave ends. And recycle this because padding is garbage. And here I am going to take a little more melee damage. Medical turret actually solves a lot of our healing problems as well. So I'm going to grab that. We'll take this. Uh, one thing to know about range is that your weapons have a minimum range of 100. So even if we were able to get our range to negative 100, then it that's as far down as it could go. Um, so we would not ever put ourselves down to not being able to attack. And a minimum range of 100 is risky, like it, it requires some playing around, but it's not impossible to deal with, so I'm pretty happy just continuing to take minus range on this character. This should be a great wave for us, we can basically just sit still and <laughs> punch aliens. Since we attack so quickly, there's no chance of any of these guys actually hitting me. Also means all the money is right here to pick up right away. Did tank a, a couple hits there, but we are managed to pick up some consumable healing, and we have this medical turret, so our healing is actually pr pretty good, even without some regeneration or lifesteal. It's possible I want to increase my range before I fight the elite. just to make it a little easier to dodge some elites, but overall I think we can rely mostly on our defensive stats. I will reduce my dodge to get my max HP up, max HP is one of the things we're missing, and I will definitely take this clover, re-add that dodge right back in, and here I'm going to take the level 3 upgrade for more max HP, and the plus 4 melee damage. Crit chance would also be nice to add in, but just having additional flat damage is going to matter the most for what we're doing here. Minus 15 more range. There's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this. We'll, we'll play at minimum range and show you how that one works and continue to do that. Here I am actually going to take a second medical turret, though, because that will keep us alive a little better. <laughs> All right, well, I talked about maybe wanting to get my range up, but instead we are putting our range down to the minimum. Let's take that as well and lock in another medical turret. That will actually give us quite a lot of healing even without any regen regen or lifesteal. With three medical turrets and a garden and a couple points in consumable healing, we're, our healing problems are basically solved. Especially now that I have my max HP up to actually quite a nice value. 65 at wave 10 is quite good. Um, we're very unlikely to lose all of our HP at once, so just having a little bit of healing should be plenty to keep us alive. Especially when combined with the cute monkey healing as well. 
So we have a lot of non, sort of non-standard ways of healing in, on this character. Which is totally fine, you don't have to use one of the two main healing stats. You usually need some way to heal, especially when you are playing as we are with exactly 100 range, but... Um, so it's interesting, I could try to build up my engineering a little to make those uh, medical turrets better, but you need to gain, I think, 20 engineering before you gain an additional healing point from them, so it's, it's not worth it to do that. On the other hand, I will take this for an, a little bit of crit chance and melee damage. 20 luck is very tempting. Do I want that over for melee damage, though? I think I'll give this a go. I wouldn't mind seeing some higher level items. Um, that could definitely be wrong. I would certainly not fault you for just taking the melee damage there, though. We'll definitely take another turret, and I will continue to just take armor. Having additional armor will help us not die, of course. Dangerous Bunny and Adrenaline, both really good. Our dodge is at 11 below cap. So we will actually heal quite a bit off of the Adrenaline. Gonna upgrade our weapons again, and I'll buy the Dangerous Bunny because that will basically result in a little more money quickly. And we'll roll here, and wow, I want all of these items, so I'm gonna lock this entire shop. And let's fight our first Elite. We should have plenty of both damage and defensive stats to take down this elite without dying, I think. We are taking several hits from it because our... Or we, we take pretty heavy hits from it because our armor is not great. So we do have to kind of retreat whenever we fail a dodge and actually, actually tank a hit. We're going to have to retreat and heal up. But we shouldn't tank that many hits because we have 50% dodge. So even if I miss some dodging, just going to stay just out of its range there and finish it off. So even if I miss some dodging, we'll, we should usually have the natural dodge proc. Trying to chase down this guy. I can run just through the whole pile of enemies at this point, because we now have a lot of consumables, consumables on the ground and the medical turrets. One reason that I took luck earlier, of course, which I, I didn't mention but um, was thinking about, is that increasing our luck increases the number of fruits that we drop, so it will work with our consumable heal and our general plan of being in the middle of enemies and grabbing consumable healing to keep us alive. This is a great item, extra stomach. This is going give to give us tons of maximum HP, especially when combined with all the luck that we have. And here I'm going to grab three armor because, like I said, armor is kind of the only thing that we're missing from this build in order to make ourselves truly invincible. Let's grab this fist, gentle alien, and we will take some additional speed. Leather Vest is also obviously one of the best weapons uh, items in the game. I'll take this other fist as well and continue to level that. I don't want to cap my max HP because we just got the extra stomach. Um, and Handcuffs is considerably worse on melee characters than it is on ranged, both because melee characters tend to want more max HP and also because melee is worth half of what ranged or elemental is, so you get half as much value from the handcuffs as you would on a ranged character. Let's lock the warrior helmet, though, because max HP and armor are both really solid for this character. And, in fact, I'm going to grab the leather vest and the community support. Do I want to risk the weird ghost? So, we would need to heal up with our medical turrets, but we have three of them. It's a little bit of a late wave for this, but, you know, you only live once, so let's do that. And I don't particularly need the shackles, so I'm not going to lock it. Just stand near all these blue dots on the map so I can immediately heal back up after starting at 1 HP. <laughs> With Weird Ghost, you always want to think, like, what is going to happen right at the start of the level? Am I going to take a bunch of hits? Is it likely that enough enemies spawn around me that I'm in trouble? Do I have a good way of healing back up so that... Do I have a good way of healing back up, or do I have to just dodge every hit for the rest of the wave? In this case, we have great ways of healing back up. And we know that they will be present right at the beginning of the level, so it's very safe for us to start the wave at 1 HP. Um, at this point, for this wave, I've pretty much given up on dodging. 
none of these enemies can kill me faster than the medical turrets can keep me alive, because they, they all very kindly spawned in the same place, so they're all constantly hitting me. With three medical turrets, we're getting um, uh, something like 10 HP a second, so it's basically like having 100 HP regeneration. No, that's not right. We're getting uh, 3 HP every... Yeah, it's every two seconds, so we're getting like 5 HP a second. It's basically like having 50 HP regeneration. Do 8% more damage here, and continue to buy all of the items in the shop. Very happily. We get to roll. Um... Yeah, I'll still take some fertilizer here, and the fist as well, of course, we're going to lock. I'm going to roll again. Our dodge is capped, so Peaceful Bee is less useful than it would be otherwise, but more armor certainly couldn't hurt, so I'll lock in the duct tape and roll again. Flaming Brass Knuckles is also one that's kind of interesting, so at level 2, the Flaming Brass Knuckles hits for 54, which is exactly the same as the Fist. So even though the burning damage is not going to be amazing for us, because we don't have any elemental damage, the Flaming Brass Knuckles is strictly superior to the Fist. So I'm going to swap one Fist for it, just to show you that. I don't think you need to do that at all, just because like we're spending a bunch of materials on a fairly marginal upgrade. But... Adding in one of those can increase your damage, especially if you happen to pick up some elemental damage or high percent damage. And if you can pick up a few of them, then you get the elemental damage tag that increases the burning effect. So it is a, a strictly superior option if you can get it in a way that doesn't cost you too much money. Usually, I think it's probably not really worth the upgrade, just because you won't have the damage to make use of it. And in fact, for this build, I don't think it's going to be worth the upgrade, but I wanted to show you that, so we're going to grab it. I mean, plunge into the middle of those aliens, just to make sure that we can clear the ranged aliens. One of the ways that we could die is by taking a bunch of hits from, like, eight ranged aliens all at once. So I'm just making sure not to let those guys and the tentacles build up too much. Additional luck for minus engineering. I mean, this elemental damage actually will matter now that we are taking the flaming brass knuckles. So yeah, I'll take the wolf helmet. It's going to reduce the healing that we get from our medical turrets by one. But at this point, I think that's okay. Here, I will continue to grab crit chance and dodge. And I love playing it at negative 121 range. So I'm very happy to do that. I'm going to roll this one. I think we can do better. Our speed is fine. So let me re-roll this again, actually, and I'll just grab the attack speed. I was hoping to get a level 3 upgrade there, but it started to get too expensive. Let's combine two fists and grab a flaming brass knuckles, and then also everything else in the shop. <laughs> oh, I should have combined two blue fists, actually, rather than two purples. Um, I forgot that we had a level 1 fist available. Helmet is an item I think that is often a trap, because plus one armor for minus 2% speed, pretty bad ratio. Here, though, armor is one of the only things that actually matters to this character, so we're going to grab it. Jetpack is incredible, great item. You should basically always pick this. Even though we are dodge capped, it's still going to be super useful. And plus luck for minus for every crit we have. You know what? Sure, I'll take this. Our luck isn't... Like, 80 luck is high, but not insanely high. We're just getting a lot of level 4 items, which is kind of fun. Now we can set the boss on fire, too. Just gonna follow this guy around. <laughs> Anything else comes near me, we'll punch it. I did take a bunch of damage there, so I'm gonna back off for a moment. Stay near with some medical turrets, heal up actually tanking a, a few too many hits, so I do need to play a little more carefully. Alright, where'd you go? <laughs> Hard to see exactly where my character is in that sea of enemies. So, when that happens, when things get really complicated, um, and the reason things got really complicated is that I have been killing the the summoners, the ones that summon the little shooty guys, and not standing on top of them. So you can see that like, when I kill one of these guys, three enemies spawn out of him. 
So what you are supposed to do is stand near them as a melee character so you can kill those guys right away. What I didn't do in that wave is allow them... Uh, like What I did in that wave was allow them to build up a lot so that there were so many enemies on screen I couldn't really dodge effectively. That's okay, though. Our defensive stats are so good they just carried me through that. Um, do I want to start repairing my lifesteal? Uh, probably it's worth doing that. I can grab that and then we can get that back to a reasonable amount. Zero engineering, our medical turrets are still providing three healing, so ten engineering wouldn't change anything. I'm just gonna skip the diploma. And then, yeah, I can actually start boosting my lifesteal a little bit. If we get 10% lifesteal, that will help us against bosses and elites, mostly. Here, I'm gonna buy both of these things. Lock the missile. Roll. We will upgrade our fist. And then I'll continue to add in some more flaming brass knuckles. Again, mostly just because I like that they are strictly better than the fist. And we do actually have enough uh, elemental damage now that the damage boost is pretty relevant. So you can see here what I'm doing is I'm killing these guys and then standing where the little adds are about to spawn. So that fewer of these small shooty guys get to run around the field hitting me. So we're, we're doing a much better job of managing crowd control this time. Because there's no elite to fight. You saw that when I did my guide on the jack, these were some of the most dangerous enemies because they built up a ton of shooting. Um, that's true for most melee characters, I would say. When it's free, um, you should probably take shackles, but I'm enjoying playing this theme build of maximum negative range. So while I would say you should probably take shackles in this spot, we're not going to just because I want to keep my range at negative 100. I think that's just too fun to pass up. And I'll boost my lifesteal a little, a little bit. Let's combine and buy some flaming brass knuckles. We'll get this missile. Roll again. A little more uh, HP from consumables is really nice. The fist is... So one disadvantage of swapping to flaming brass knuckles is we can't easily grab this fist anymore because we have nothing that can combine. So we basically gave up a weapon level to do that. I will grab the snail still and the goat skull, and I'm not going to roll again. Let's keep going. You want to chase down these brain aliens, of course, because they buff the other aliens. And if you let too many of them get buffed, then the move speed and damage boost can actually be pretty significant. Again, for this build, there's not a lot that can really threaten me. We're already dodge capped. We've got like 15 armor and pretty good regen at this point, so I'm really not worried. Also, the uh, extra stomach has boosted me up to 92 health already without even buying that much maximum health. So we're already basically invincible. But this is sort of the point that you want to end up at on a melee character. The ability to just take a bath in a bunch of aliens and come out the other side. Uh, minus dodge, not a huge problem, so sure, I'll take the little frog. We're already 14 over dodge cap. And then here I'll just take some damage. Or do I want three armor? Eh, we'll, we'll take damage. Damage is fun. Uh, crown will not pay for itself in time, but little muscly dude, great item for us as well. Here I will grab this metal. Losing crit chance is actually one of the ways that de we're decreasing our damage the most. Uh, crit chance is one of the best effects. Crit chance and attack speed are some of the best effects for us for increasing our damage right now. Actually, our attack speed's quite good because I'm the 50% bonus for using unarmed weapons is invisible. So really, it's percent damage and crit chance are the two things that would raise our attack speed the most, our damage the most. But here we're just going to grab the coffee. We'll grab the black belt. Or no, not the black belt. Do I want this? 
25% XP gain, I don't think that'll pay for itself. It's a really expensive way to buy three melee damage. I'm going to take the beanie and the terrified onion, though. I think that's kind of fun. We can get our speed up very high. That'll help us stick to this elite a little better, too. This is typically one of the harder elites in the game, I think, because it charges at you and also is hard to dodge because it sends shots after you. But our damage is so high and our survivability is so complete that it's not currently threatening us. Again, just hanging out where I have just killed one of those summoners to make sure that we clear all the summons. More out of good practice than because I'm particularly worried that we're going to lose this run at this point, but stranger things have happened. I have certainly lost runs before that I thought were guaranteed. Probably if I were a more like streamery streamer, I would be trying to hype up the danger that we're in, like, oh no, are we going to be able to win? push the button to see if we can pew, 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 pew. but but like we're, we're gonna win this run I'm not gonna pretend otherwise <laughs> I'm gonna grab this med kit I'm gonna grab this fist uh, sure I'll take this coupon and both of these items are really fun so let's grab those use my free reroll because why not don't want to increase my range because we don't want to accidentally get that over a hun minus a hundred Being comfortable playing with very short-ranged weapons, I think, is a really nice skill to have, too, in Brotato. So this this is, like, a pretty useful character to play, I think. Because you just want to be able to make sure that you can go right next to the enemies while not walking into them, that you, you have pretty good movement control. Oh no, come back! Haha, <laughs> got him right at the end. <laughs> Alright, um... Yeah, I'll take that. We're not in danger of increasing our range over minus 100, and I will not take the alien worm, of course. Here I'm going to grab the panda, and grab the flaming brass knuckles, and I'll lock this mastery, and then reroll. Lock this fist, and then reroll. And... I'm not going to lock the Terrified Onion, although I would take it. Multiple Flaming Brass Knuckles are, of course, worse than... Like, they get worse in multiples because, as I discussed in my Mage Guide, um, which, if you haven't watched, you should, because I think that's one of my better ones. I think it's really fun. Um, burning weapons don't stack, like the burning effect does not stack with itself, so having two things that apply burning is not actually better than having just the one thing that applies burning most of the time. We're actually lucky, so something that you might not know is that your weapons spawn around you in a random order, and so which weapons appear on opposite sides if you have different weapons is actually random, as far as I can tell. Um, Having our two burning fists on opposite, on the polar opposite sides of our character means that we're actually applying the fire more evenly, which is great. They're less likely to hit the same thing. Sure, I'll take some crit chance. That's one of the things that we're missing. Don't want more knockback, even though we have a decent amount of knockback uh, already. The knockback is more of a disadvantage than an advantage. Here, we're going to take metal... It does reduce our crit chance, but such a good item. And some more attack speed. Gonna grab this fist and this mastery and roll again. Oh, what I should have done is grab Peacock just to show off a little bit because our character is so invincible. Just be like, yeah, even bosses with plus 50% damage can't hurt me. 
We can do that, though, just by getting a few more enemies to show up. <laughs> Unfortunately, this Flaming Brass Knuckles is exactly the kind that I can't buy. I'd have to sell a level 3 fist for it. I don't think that's worth doing, so I'm going to re-roll. Small Magazine actually is kind of interesting for non- ranged characters as well sometimes, just because it's 10 attack speed. Um, 10 attack speed for minus 6% damage is a pretty good purchase some of the time. Um, it's very expensive though, so while I might take it if it was free, we're not going to buy it. I'll buy a repost though, and roll again. We can't buy this level 2 fist, but Alien Eye is actually pretty fun because we have our extra stomach, which has given us 58 bonus health. So this is actually going to be quite a lot of damage, the Alien Eyes. And we'll grab the weird food and roll again just to see what we would have gotten. Aw oh, man, could have gotten this power generator, could have gotten insanity, could have gotten... Uh, couldn't have bought this because, again, it's the wrong level, but here we go. We can try to stack these guys up a little bit. Back off and grab some consumables whenever we take damage that we don't heal up immediately. Or play around the medical turrets. Actually tanking a little more damage than I should here, so let's, let's make sure that I am playing around my turrets. Hehe. <laughs> All right, I'm making this harder than it has to be by missing every single dodge. <laughs> After bragging about how easy it was and how we were gonna win with no trouble, I suddenly put myself in like a little bit of danger there, but <laughs> the character is still so powerful that we were never at real risk. All I had to do was just not step in every attack. And there we go. <laughs> All right, my friends. Thank you so much for watching, as always. That is the Brawler. I think this is one of the, the characters that's really fun to just, like, relax and play a little bit with. You can very quickly get to defensive stats because your damage is so high already. You can very quickly get to defensive stats that just make you impossible to kill and just cruise through to the end of the game. I think kind of the important things that we did this time are recognizing that you don't need lifesteal or HP regeneration to heal, although you certainly can buy those, and that having minus range is not that big a penalty. Um, also, buying early harvesting is always good. As always, my friends, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video, or even if you haven't, please feel free to leave a comment below. That helps get the get it the algorithm to show this to more people and you can always subscribe to my channel for more brotato class guides and other strategy game analysis cheers folks gg